<clears throat> All right. Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome everybody to the weekly episode on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Central of Nomberg Law Live. And as we have been for almost three years now, or more than three years, we've been bringing you interesting conversations with people in their areas of expertise. And I'm so pleased to have my friend and colleague, Joel Smith out of Eufaula, Alabama, as my guest today. Hey, Joel, good to see you, bud. Hey, Bernard, good to see you, and thanks for having me. Oh, it's been my pleasure. I've been wanting to get you on the show for quite a while, so I'm glad life has kind of calmed down, at least for these 30 minutes, so we could get together and have a good little chat. Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Well, we got what's today, Tuesday, and, and Christmas is in just a couple of days, and how, how crazy is your world at, the, at your practice uh, this week? Does it slow down at all, or is it hurry up and get stuff done, or what's it like? No, it's, you know, um, it's a little bit of a hurry up and get stuff done this year. Um, this year's a little different. I mean, for many years, I would have a trial um, set in Clayton uh, for the Clayton civil term, the, which, you know, the judges always schedule those trials for the first, basically the first Monday after New Year's. And so it would, if you had a trial set, it would just crush your holiday. I don't have that this year. Um, I did have it last year, but this year, seem to have a lot of real estate. Um, our, our real estate market's gotten really active. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, we've got a decent amount of real estate transactions to, to try to get closed before the end of the year and some donations and things like that that people are wanting to do in terms of real estate. So we're going to be pretty busy here the next week or so. Well, that's, that's good. And you really have just kind of given us a broad stroke of life in a, a small town. You fall is not the smallest of towns, but it's it's a small town, even by Alabama standards, but practicing law, it's hard, I would imagine, just to do only one thing in a town of, what, 15,000 people or so. Yeah, yeah, you've got to be willing to sort of do it all, <laughs> you know, um, if you want to make a, make a, have a nice practice and make a decent living, you've got to be willing to sort of branch out. Um, you know, it's, I started there in Birmingham at Burr Foreman. Mm -hmm. in the mid 90s and I, I did commercial finance there um did a lot of a lot of it involved nursing homes and hospitals so I was in a pretty narrow area and then decided after a few years of that I wanted to to Paige and I wanted to raise our children in a small town and practice in a small town so I went from being pretty specialized in the commercial finance world to having to do really everything um mm -hmm. And so it's a challenge <laughs> some days, well, I, for sure. I suspect that at times it is. And for, for those of you who may not know, I know Joel knows this. I grew up in Dothan and our dad, uh, David and me and Rob, the three boys, our dad practiced law for almost 50 years or right at 50 years in Dothan and was in Daleville, an even smaller community town just outside of Dothan. Uh, that's where he really started. So Daleville, other than Fort Rucker, I can't imagine Delville having more than six or 8,000 people. And when dad started in the late sixties, there may have been just a couple of thousand people back then. So you really had to know a lot of work, a lot of different areas of the law uh, when you start your practice. Yeah. And you know, for some, I think about guys that did that and, and lawyers that did that um, places like here, or Delville. Um, and, you know, they obviously didn't have Google and didn't have the electronic resources that we yeah. have now. It yeah. just had to be really tough. Um, the pay, and of course, the pace was different. People didn't expect to get things done immediately, but but the learning curve had to be pretty steep in a lot of ways, just because of the information. Oh, I, I suspect so. Now we live in the world of instant gratification, and why haven't you told me three minutes before I even asked the question of my answers? Uh, but you're right. Grow when we were growing up, it was just it was a whole different pace. But you didn't grow up in the in a household of, of lawyers. I know that your family was in the newspaper business for many years. Your parents were very actively involved, and and I want you to take a minute, if you don't mind, and I I want to I want to share a little bit about your your parents and being involved in the newspaper business for many many years, very successfully. Yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to. So my dad was a. Um, he was a journalism major at Florida State, and I uh, grew up in South Alabama, then Panama City, and, and worked for the uh, Birmingham News for a couple of years in the 50s, and then moved to a small town, Geneva, 
Alabama um, in the, I guess that would have been the late 50s. And then he, he moved to Eufaula in the early 60s and became editor of the newspaper here, the Eufaula Tribune, and, and ultimately bought the paper. Uh, he bought in and then he bought, bought his partner out. Um, and he, he was the publisher of the Tribune for until 2005 or so when he retired um, for, you know, nearly 50 years. I mean, a long time. And, um, you know, one, one thing that, I, that was impressive to me just with, with, his, with his work was he, he published a weekly column um, every week for 58 years. And he, wow. he never missed. Um, wow. It was called Candid Comments. And so, of course, that was just he wrote whatever about whatever he wanted to. And we, after he died, we published a collection of his columns, um, Candid Comments. And it's really a great collection, if you like. You know, wow. small town journalism. That, that's more than 2,500 columns. If my oh, yeah. Is yeah. Even close. That's incredible. Yeah, it, it really is quite a body of work. I mean, and going through it to try to distill it down to a collection that we could publish was, a, it took years for us to do that. <clears throat> wow. Well, he, if he was at the Birmingham uh, News in the 50s, he was here such a, such during a turbulent and dynamic time period and in, in not only Alabama history, but in the U.S. history. So I bet he was up close and personal to so many events that, that are historically uh recorded no, yeah no, no doubt and then it, you know and then on the sort of the news side of being here in the in the small town um that's a tough job i mean he was he was pretty serious about um reporting the news even when it was bad um and even when it when it impacted his friends i mean he he had to write stories about um or publish stories and you know news accounts of things that you know, some people may not have wanted to be known publicly um, that were and that were impacted his friends. And that was tough. I mean, you know, he would they publish twice a week and you follow. And so he would be down <clears throat> late night putting the paper together, putting it to bed, as they used to say, um, you know, on a couple nights a week. And then the other days, of course, they were writing and covering stories and so forth. So, you know, the paper would come out um, Tuesdays and Thursdays was their schedule for most of those years. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, Friday night, he may be out to dinner somewhere and somebody he's written something about is at the table next to him. <laughs> and, you know, and it could get kind of, you had to be tough. I mean, and he was not a thin skinned person. Um, kind of like, I mean, it's got some similarities to being a lawyer or a judge. You know, you got to be willing to sometimes do things that aren't the most popular, but they're the right thing to do. Well, I was, I was going to say in, in any small town, you're going to normally run into people at, at, at your place of worship or at the club or even at the grocery store. It's hard to not see certain people. And I suspect at times that may have impacted your practice of law and some of your decision making. Yeah, and you know, early on when he was when I, I moved back here in '96, um, and there were there would be things that might get published in the paper that had a little blowback on me. Nothing bad, but I mean, I would you know because he, he, I'm Joel Smith Jr. He was Joel right. Smith, and so I still get this. Was your dad the newspaper publisher? I'm, yeah, you know, he was here for so long. A lot of people knew him, um, but uh, you know, it didn't. It just never really bothered me. I mean, just because I grew up in it. Um, you know, that, that was always his career from the time I was born on till the, you know, till he retired and he, he passed away in 2009, but, um, I'm, I'm used to it. And, you know, we, it's funny as kid or people every once in a while, he would, we'd get our house egged or we'd get, you know, <laughs> people would get mad at something in the paper. They would take it out on, on us, but, uh, so, so they couldn't, your parents couldn't always blame it on the boys on something y'all were up to. Oh yeah, they created a lot of it themselves and uh, he did, but yeah, that, that was fine. And, um, you know, it, he set a good example, he and my mom both. And my mom worked down there, she was a history professor um, before they got married. And then she wound up working there at the paper too. And then um, in later years, my brother joined them before they sold it. But um, yeah, it was a, it's an interesting way to grow up in a newspaper family in a small town. Well, what, what led you to the law and not going into newspaper, into reporting and so forth? Um, well, I, I actually, you know, I worked at the paper uh, starting in probably fourth grade. I started out putting the inserts in, you know, like the Kmart or the Sears or the Winn-Dixie little advertising circulars. Mm -hmm. 
sure they broke all kind of child labor laws, but, but <laughs> we would do that as, as kids. And then I had a paper out. And then um, uh, in, in high school, I started out as a um, sort of a reporter down there, cub reporter, and would do, you know, little stories and cover sports and um, would help them put together the paper at night. You know, back then, you, they would print it out. Um, and then you you cut it and literally paste it on those layout pages, and then we um, take a picture of it and make a plate, a negative, and then a plate, and then the plate would get um, uh, loaded on a van and taken down to Dothan where they printed it at the paper in Dothan. Um, so I grew up in the all you know in, in the industry from top to bottom, kind of. Um, and when I was in college, I, I majored in journalism. I thought you know that maybe something I wanted to do. Um, but ultimately, I just made the decision I'd, I'd rather be a lawyer. Um, I had two uncles that were lawyers, um, one in Montgomery and one in Huntsville, and they were a big influence on me um, in a lot of ways. And so, I, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I wasn't wild about a journalism career. Um, and I, I kind of went to law, you know, that, that we're, we're the same age, but back, um, I guess, 80, or let's see, 1990 when, when I graduated from college. The job market wasn't great. It certainly wasn't great for not only for journalists and reporters. Um, a lot of my friends were going to law school. I had uncles that were lawyers. It looked appealing. So I said, what the heck, I'll give it a try. I, I didn't know I'd practice this whole, you know, my whole career. But, you know, here I am 26 years later, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Well, before we head into that direction, I got to ask, when you were in high school and being a Cub reporter, I know you went to Lakeside and you had buddies who played all kinds of sports and even over at Eufaula High School. Did you ever report on their sports, their games and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I would write stories on games. And you know, did, football did you ever games. get any uh, blowback from them when somebody may not have had a stellar game or something? No, I, you know, I wasn't too hard on them. I, <laughs> I pretty much just just laid out the facts and the stats and, and all. Um, what, what I really like to do um, – I, I would do some feature stories like typewriter portrait type stories of people. Um, and I really like doing those kind of stories um, more so than like hard news. That's you. You were the early Tom Rinaldi. You know, that's, <laughs> but what goes on outside of the playing fields is always so much more to me, so much more interesting. I mean, the games come and go, but the impact of the individual. So I bet that was fun, at least to a certain extent writing about some of those stories for you back then. Yeah, yeah, I always enjoyed that. And, it, and I did a lot more than sports. I did, you know, I'd cover city council. I'd do, um, you know, different different types of news stories. And it was, it was, good, it was good training for being a lawyer, uh, you know, honestly. Um, just gathering facts and assimilating, writing on a deadline, trying to write clearly, um, you know, with space limitations and all that. So I was going to say, I'm probably reading people just body language and communication. It's those things that you don't learn in law school that you had at least a little exposure uh, pre-law school uh, that would serve you well in your practice later on. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, definitely had, you know, I was pretty lucky just being able to interview people and interact with them and all that. A lot of high school kids probably didn't get to do that to the extent well, I did. Well, I, I wasn't going to bring this up, but I've had two friends ask me, well, was... <laughs> Is my cousin Vinny indicative of anything of practicing law or trying a case in Barber County? And I looked at both of them. Both of the guys are not from Alabama. They're from the Northeast. They were being funny in their own way. I'm like, really? Anyway, <laughs> that's. I want to talk about just that, Joel, about it's, it's too easy for big city lawyers, let's say Atlanta, let's say Birmingham, any, anywhere outside of the wiregrass to come into Barber County or, or any small town, I'm not just picking on Barber County, to just assume, just because you're in a big town, doesn't I'm, I'm gonna come in and show you small town lawyers how it's done. And it's far from that. I've never experienced that, but I have seen, you know, even though I'm from Dothan, I've lived in Birmingham over 20 years, but when you go to some of these smaller towns, they think you're from the big city and you don't know what's what. And my question, or, or what I'm, I guess I'm throwing to you for commentary is, how do you see that play out sometimes in a trial or in court when these big city lawyers come in and think that they're just going to show everybody how it's done? 
Well, it's funny. We, um, my cousin Benny was on uh, night before last, and <laughs> <laughs> we watched. I didn't watch the whole thing, but man, what a great movie! Uh, <laughs> just, uh, just one of the funniest movies ever. Um, you know, in, in in Alabama, you know, I think we're we're blessed with the, our, our profession anyway. I think we've got as far as trial lawyers and transactional lawyers, you know, whatever, Mobile to Montgomery to Birmingham to Huntsville, all our bigger firm lawyers, we've got some of the best lawyers in this country, in my opinion. I mean, I think we, I think, uh, I don't know what it is about, maybe it's our, um, just our culture or our, you know, values or our, our certainly our two, you know, our, our main law schools and other, other law schools in the state. I mean, we produce really fine lawyers. Um, and so, I don't see a lot of bad mistakes by city lawyers here. Now, sometimes, um, you know, they'll mispronounce names or streets or things like that. And, you you know, and they'll, they'll cringe a little bit. And, you know, a lot of firms are smart enough to where they'll tie in a smaller town guy mm-hmm. or, or girl or, you know, lady with the, with the case. Um, and, the, the really smart ones hire local counsel to, <laughs> to help them if it's a bad, you know, if it's a serious trial, I mean, they're going to have local counsel. Um, and we, we certainly do have done our fair share of that and, and try to help um, with that local flavor as far as, you know, jury selection and local witnesses and, and things like that. Um, but you do have to be careful um, if you're, you know, a bigger, a bigger town lawyer um they can make i've seen them make some bad mistakes um and you know some of them will underestimate small town lawyers sometimes too and their abilities and um or even the juries yeah they they may it's it's i've seen it i'm sure you've seen it many times and this is not to bash out of state or big city lawyers it's just making an assumption that just because you're from a small town or from a country community if you're sitting in that box doesn't mean you're not as smart or smarter than those people who have the law degrees trying to prove their cases in court i think that's a huge mistake some lawyers can make yeah no doubt i mean and i've seen them you know almost i don't want to say talking down to the jury but that's a mistake that that sometimes they'll make um you know i don't see a lot of alabama lawyers making that mistake i have seen some you know atlanta type lawyers here that um you know, that have done, done some of that. And it's, it makes you cringe <laughs> you know, one, a little, especially if you're on, if they're on your side, <laughs> not as much if they're on the other side. But, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, Joel, one of my favorite stories is uh, there's a judge that we both know who has a five county uh, district, if you will, in the West part of the state. And you never know which county where he's going to be, which courthouse. So if you want to, have a hearing, say for a, a bench trial or a bench hearing, you better know how to get in touch with the judicial assistant so she can call that judge in from the farm. Now, yep. he has shown up. I've met this judge over at the Bibb County Courthouse, and he's still wearing his work boots and just came off the tractor, throws on his robe. My client is wide eyed because he's not from that part of the state. And we sit down, and it's very informal. But it's still, it's the process that we have to do, for example, for a workers' comp case. So do you, I know that, that at least one of the judges in Barber County may have different courthouses to attend to. How do you keep all that straight sometimes, knowing which courthouse you're going to be uh, going to, depending on the judge? Well, you know, I, I usually can keep pretty good track of that. Um, but I promise you, on a regular basis, you know, we've got two divisions. <clears throat> we've got the Clayton division which is the west part of barber county and then you follow us the division is the eastern part and there's a there's a sort of an imaginary line down the middle um and it's happens well not not as much with covid but when we're actually having in-person court all those years um pretty routine for a lawyer to accidentally go to the follow courthouse you know maybe it's somebody from birmingham that's not as familiar um you get this frantic call hey i went to you follow you I mean, i'll be there in 30 minutes it's it's about a 20, 30 minute drive over to Clayton. So that, that happens. And I, I don't know, you know, how they don't check that, but they don't sometimes. Um, well, that's several. And the judge is understanding about it. I mean, yeah. he knows. 
Most Spencer. of them are very understanding. Some of the older ones who, who have their ways, uh, maybe not as, as much as, as some of the younger ones, but several counties have multiple courthouses in them. And you really do have to be very familiar, like St. Clair County, they have two. Uh, Bessemer, you know, if you're going to Jefferson County, you better check if you're going to Bessemer or if you're going to downtown uh, Birmingham. So that's just two that, that come to mind. Well, uh, guys, for those of you who are just joining us or maybe watching us live, I'm talking with Joel Smith out of Eufaula, Alabama, and we're talking about life and law uh, in Barber County, what it's like. And, and I had the fortunate uh, childhood of growing up south of Eufaula, about an hour south in Dothan, Houston County, not Houston County, as they may pronounce it from folks up north. But Eufaula is known for many things, deer hunting, its lakes, or its lake, and, and many just uh, just the fine life of, of living in a small town. And that's my question to you, Joel. What is it when, when Paige, your, your wife, uh, y'all made the decision you wanted to come back home, home for you, why not Birmingham? Why not Montgomery? Why not one of the bigger cities as opposed to truly coming home to you fall? Well, you know, Paige, she went off to, to she graduated from Alabama and went to DC um, and worked for Senator Shelby for about three years. When she went back to law school, I think her plan was to go work on the Senate Banking Committee back up in D.C. As a, as a lawyer, <laughs> and instead she wound up in Eufaula, <laughs> ultimately teaching school and doing some other things, and now she's our circuit clerk mm -hmm. um, and has been for a couple of years. But, you know, we, we just made a decision. I, you know, I, I, I practiced at, at Burr Foreman there from 94 to 96, loved the people there, had a great opportunity and a great practice. Um, and but just, you know, I had, I had an office up on the, the that was the uh, South Trust Tower at the time. I don't know what it's called now, maybe the Ship Tower. Uh, either Ship or were. Wells Fargo, it's changed a few times. Yeah, that, you know it's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and so a lot of days, I think I was on the 30th floor, and a lot of days on Friday, found myself looking down I-65 going, man, I'd like to go home and go uh, fishing or hunting or something, <laughs> you know, or... Um, and over time, I just decided um, that that was, you know, I wanted to live in a small town. I never would have guessed that um, when I was in high school or college, probably. Um, you know, I, and then when I get into law school, I assumed I would stay at a big firm in a bigger town. Um, but over time, we just realized, hey, this is a pretty good life. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're certainly there they're pros and cons and you, know, you give up certain things when you move from a, a big town to a small town, but you gain things too. Um, you know, it's, it's a trade-off, but we just ultimately decided um, to, to go ahead and move um, before I got too further entrenched in the big firm life up there um, and had a house and children. Um, we decided to go ahead and move. We were, we were engaged and we decided um, we, we got engaged and moved and started a new practice all in about a six month span. Wow. So that was pretty hectic. Not just a gradual, let's just get it all done in six months. <laughs> yeah. And it was, uh, it was a little touchy at times, but <laughs> that's what we did. So I, you know, I, I basically came back here in, in June of 96 and hung out a shingle. And, you know, I had a, a friend, um, you may know Kevin Potoff, Courtney's husband, Kevin, they all know each other. So he was a banker. Um, and he would send me real estate closings. I had, I was familiar with that, um, from my practice there at Burr. I started doing public defender work, um, you know, doing, uh, handling court appointed cases, sort of learned my way around that. Um, and then just sort of grew it from there. I mean, I had, yeah. you know, I bet it was nostalgic for you coming back home. Uh, yeah, it was. And the other part of that, um, my, my brother, my, Parents were in the newspaper business here, so they were here, um, and that was a that was a plus. And then my um, my brother Jack, had, he moved back here and was working for the paper at that time too. So it was kind of nice we we're gonna you know be here at the same time raising our families. I had other other people from the, that I grew up with that had moved back here, um, you know, in different businesses and, and professions and so forth. So it was you know it was a fun time really kind of get reunited with old, old friends and and so forth you know it's it's you've got a high school senior and i know that she's 
probably expressed like all high school seniors in small town. I want out of here. I want the big city. I don't like driving 100 miles to go to the mall and those things. But it'll be interesting because not all kids keep that mentality as they mature into adults. They come back home. They come back to their small towns. But it, you know, it's like it's like anything else. They'll they'll figure it out through college and and as time progresses. But I also know you've got two. You've got three children. One headed to dental school. We got one who had a great has having a great adventure at W and L. Do you, do you predict any of the three to join you in the practice of law? Um, you know that's a that's a good question. I I don't think you know. The, Wes Pierce just really hates dental school. I don't see him. I, I don't think he's more of a science guy and a hands-on, you know, person. Um, I don't, I don't think he, I think he would be bored to tears with law practice. Um, Sellers, you know, he's a, he's a reader and a writer. We got a um, chance right there. We got to lean on him. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, you know, he's, he didn't know what he wants to do. He's, he's probably going to major in biology and, minor in Russian. I don't know where that's going to lead him, but he, he's talked about getting into some kind of biotech or, you know, he's talked about med school, but I could just as easily see him going to law school. Mm -hmm. um, and then Celia is a, is a reader and a writer as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I could see her interested in law school for, for sure. You know, it'll be interesting to see how all that plays out for the kids, but Joel, oh, yeah. we're getting close to the, the end of our conversation and I sure appreciate your, your time today. And I want to I want to leave you with maybe offering a little bit of advice. Let's say that you're talking to some kids in law school right now. They can't decide if they want to uh, land a job at one of the big firms in the big cities, or they want to hang out their own shingle, maybe back in their hometown. And I know there's lots of pros and cons there to consider. Maybe share just a little bit. You you shared some of this thought process. What would you tell those kids if you're speaking to a group of law students? How do you weed out what's best for you? Uh, man, that's a good question. Um, I, I think the my my strong advice would be, you know, if, if say somebody that's in law school that grew up in a small town and they want to eventually go back there um, and practice either with an existing practitioner or, or hang out a shingle, my strong advice would be to first go to as big a firm as you can and work work a few, you know, two to five years, um, in a, in a bigger town firm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're, you're just you, the, the benefit of being around really good lawyers and working with them and learning how to do top shelf legal work, um, and seeing different things is you can't buy that, by the, you can't get that by just coming back and hanging out a shingle, not to say you can't be successful that way. I just think it's harder. Um, when, when I left performing, Lee Thuston, I don't know if you know Lee, he was a managing partner or a lawyer there. He went on to be the managing partner. He gave me probably seven or eight giant notebooks full of forms of all sorts. Um, another lawyer, Warren Matthews, gave me a huge book of, of will forms and trust forms and things to sort of help me. Um, and then for, for years early in my practice here, I would, if I had a question, I'd call a lawyer I worked with at Burr or ask for a form or whatever. Um, and I think just learning to do that kind of work and that at that pace and that, you know, the sort of quality and the top shelf product that they put out, um, I think that's really helpful. If you get that opportunity, I would take it. And then, cause you can always, you can always move, you know, and ch make a change if you don't like it or if you want to yeah, get to the small town. One of the things you just hit upon has been so important in my career is having a mentor or mentors that you can lean on. Yep. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, 25 years into it, I'm be I'm being a mentor to young lawyers and it just uh, it just makes the practice even that much better. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. And I, I had some good ones and I appreciate them very much. And that I think that's a, a that's older lawyers need to remember that that you know, we need to help the help the younger ones when we can. Well, Joel, I sure appreciate your time today, but I I've, I've enjoyed our chat and I look forward to seeing you in a couple of days. Thanks, Bernard. Absolutely. Good talking to you. I enjoyed it. Well, guys, this will conclude this week's Nomberg Law Live with my friend and colleague, Joel Smith, out of Eufaula. As we do each week, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Pacific, Nomberg Law Live. Uh, we actually are going to have a show next week. It's going to be our year in review. We're good. We've got guests lined up into January and February. Keep going. 
So thank you for all of those of you who have supported us along the way and watch. And we hope you guys have a safe, restful, and peaceful holidays coming up. Take care.